watching KTAL News Now. Here's Brittany Dufran with your midday news break. Thanks for tuning in to KTAL News Now. I'm Brittany Dufran. Let's jump into your midday news break. Starting things over in Bowie County, Wednesday was a packed courtroom with members of Reagan's family, and many of them broke down into tears when they heard the judge read the verdict. This comes after two months of testimony with mountains of evidence and more than 140 witnesses taking the stand. In the end, it only took the jury 90 minutes to sentence Taylor Parker to death. NBC6's Donald Britton brings us reactions from the courtroom. Heavy, heavy burden it feels lifted. I feel like now we can start trying to heal. Um, we don't have this over our heads. We know where she's going to be. We know where she's at and she's taken care of. Relief after a two-month trial for Reagan Hancock's family and a chance for Jessica Brooks to address her daughter's killer. I wanted to be sure my point got across, and I feel like it did. I wanted to speak for our family and, you know, let her know what we all felt. Just, it, just how terrible she, what she's done to our family. Taylor Parker beat and slashed 21-year-old Reagan Hancock in October of 2020 and cut her unborn baby Braxton Sage from her body. The baby later died. The verdict came in less than 90 minutes, and what the prosecutor says is a testament to the strength of the case. They uh, went through the evidence and the law and felt that they had plenty of information to make that decision. So I'm, I'm very thankful that they saw the evidence the way that the state did. Parker's attorney says the system and Parker's family let her down. Obviously respect the jury's verdict. Um, this was a tough, lengthy case, factually and emotionally, um, for everybody involved. Um, so obviously we're disappointed with the outcome, but um, you know, Taylor have an automatic appeal to the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals and um, see where it goes from there. Parker was handcuffed immediately after sentencing and removed from the courtroom as soon as the victim's family finished their impact statements. She was on her way to death row in Gatesville, Texas within hours. I think she has been very difficult for the jail staff here in Bowie County. Um, I think obviously the experts would even agree that she is, just creates chaos where she goes. Um, and I think, I absolutely think that she got the punishment that she deserved today. No one from Parker's family was in the courtroom for her sentencing. Now turning things to Caddo Parish, a candidate experienced some misfortune on election day. Craig Lee was running for Shreveport District B seat as an independent candidate. On election day, his home was on fire. Lee says he made a discovery Tuesday morning and even had plans to have his watch party at his house. That quickly changed when he saw his home was unrecognizable. Lee says he thinks this fire was intentional. The door kicked in. There was a fire started in my laundry room. Fire started in the den and fire started in the hallway where the AC unit monitoring system is at. The fire remains under investigation. You can stay tuned on KTALnews.com for the latest on that. Ending things with your consumer news because getting away for the holidays is always a hassle. It always tends to be a hassle. Well, this year it probably won't get any easier. It will likely cost you more this year due to airfares in September, which jumped nearly 43% from a year earlier. Now with inflation and decreased demand for fuel increased actually, prices just keep on climbing and it's a trend that is likely going to continue as we get closer to the end of the year. However, the, hol the federal government says they will have your back this holiday flying season after putting pressure on those major airlines to commit to providing hotels and meals for standard travelers. And now this is going to lead us to our question of the day. All right, we're going to give you guys a moment to take down this QR code you see right here on your screen. Taking a look here at today's question of the day, will you be traveling this holiday season? Go ahead and tell us here. That's all for now, but don't go anywhere. More to come on your midday news break. Welcome to KTAL News Now. I'm Brittany Dufran with more on your midday news break. 
NBC6 is your local election headquarters, and the race for Shreveport mayor is heading to a runoff. Yulisha Gatewood breaks down the numbers. Take a look. How did the largest precincts in Cattle Parish vote for the next mayor of Shreveport? Well, let's take a look. According to the Secretary of State's website, the top five precincts voted in favor of Tom Arsenault. We thought we were going to run first, and, uh, and we were pleased that uh, what we thought came true. Uh, now we're turning our attention to the runoff and figuring out what, what we need to do and how we need to get our message to more voters. The precincts that include the neighborhoods Cherokee Park and Southern Hills voted in favor of Senator Greg Tarver. In Shreveport, we need to work together in unity to make Shreveport move forward. We must support each other. We must set our petty differences aside. Are you Democrat or Republican? It doesn't matter. We are all Americans. We need to work for Shreveport, both of us together, all of us together as one. Back in 2018, over 60,000 people voted in the regular session. And in the December mayoral runoff, only 38,000 people voted. That's a 36% drop. In this year's election, over 51,000 people voted in the regular election. And if the turnout for the runoff remains the same this year, it could see voter turnout numbers at about 32,000 votes, which means 26 percent of Shreveport eligible voters could decide the city's next mayor. For your local election headquarters, I'm Alicia Gatewood. Meanwhile, Florida isn't getting any breaks this hurricane season. Nicole made its way to Florida in the early hours of Thursday morning. Tropical storm Nicole reached hurricane strength Wednesday when it made landfall on Grand Bahama Island. On its way to Florida's Atlantic coast and the southeastern U.S. Florida is expecting storm surge that could further erode many beaches that were hit by Hurricane Ian in September. When it made landfall Wednesday evening on Grand Bahama Island, Nicole had maximum winds of 75 miles per hour, making it a Category 1 hurricane. Nicole is the third hurricane in the Atlantic this month, tying to the 2001 season for the most Atlantic hurricanes in November. Ending things here with your consumer news because getting away for the holidays is always a hassle. Well, this year it probably won't get any easier. It will likely cost you more this year due to airfares in September, which jumped nearly 43% from early, a year earlier. Now, with inflation and increased demand for fuel, the prices keep climbing and it's a trend that will likely continue as we get closer to the end of the year. However, the federal government says they have your back during the holiday flying season after they've put pressure on those major airlines to commit providing hotels and meals for those standard travelers. And this is going to lead us to our question of the day. Going to give you a moment to take down this QR code you see right here on your screen. Today's question of the day is, will you be traveling this holiday season? Go ahead and tell us here yes or no. It seems like we have 21% who say yes and 79% who say no. It seems like a lot of you guys may be... A lot of people may be weary about traveling this holiday season, but that's all for today. More details on these stories on KTALnews.com.